If you are an American, I guarantee, even if you don't know the name, you know this flag. Yellow banner, snake coiled over the words, don't tread on me, in bold letters. And it's one of the flags in recent memory that no matter who you are, it instantly incites some sort of emotion from you. Well, it has a name. For those who don't know, this is the Gadsden flag. And its origins go farther back than just being a protest flag in the last decade. It dates back to one of the very first political flags in the colonies. What allowed this flag to become the center of the very first political revolution? The birth of America. Well, first, let's discuss the design of the flag itself. What inspired the use of a snake in the first place? As anything in revolutionary America, we can think Benjamin Franklin. The snake imagery began with him in a joke. Back in 1751, 20 years before the war, the British had begun shipping off their criminals to the colonies. Australia wasn't a thing yet. Not taking too kindly to being the Brits' dumping ground, Franklin retorted that the colonists should pay them back by kindly spreading rattlesnakes across every portion of Britain. This was the first use of the rattlesnake in a political setting, and it kinda caught on. A few years later, Franklin made a woodcut representing the colonies as a snake cut into several pieces, representing that unity was better for all, or they would die together. At the time, the colonies were viewed as an unimportant backwater, before the bald eagle symbolized America's soaring possibilities and never-ending reach, the young nation was happy to identify with the snake in the grass, the underdog. And as the underdog, new revolutionaries believed that the colonies didn't need complete separation from Britain, but at least respect that they felt Parliament wasn't giving them. The snake became a popular mascot for patriots, and eventually the young nation as a whole. After two decades, the backwater found itself in a new fight with a giant empire. The snake, to Franklin, perfectly represented this fight. As he says, I recollected that her eyes excelled in brightness, that of any animal, and that she has no eyelids. She may therefore be esteemed an emblem of vigilance. She never begins an attack, nor when once engaged, ever surrenders. She is therefore an emblem of magnanimity and true courage. As if anxious to prevent all pretensions of quarreling with her, the weapons with which nature has furnished her, she conceals in the roof of her mouth, so that to those unacquainted with her, she appears to be a most defenseless animal. And even when those weapons are shown and extended to her defense, they appear weak and contemptible, but their wounds, however small, are decisive and fatal. Conscious of this, she never wounds till she has generously given notice even to her enemy and cautioned him against the danger of stepping on her. Was I wrong, sir, in thinking this is a strong picture of the temper and conduct of America? Boom. War. The United States is now born and has declared its independence, and revolutionaries are taking up the fight. During the revolution, there were many different flags adopted by many different militias, but one which was popular was the Appeal to Heaven flag. For a revolution, though, it didn't incite the same emotions as the snake did. Which leads to this man, Christopher Gadsden. Gadsden's actions leading the Sons of Liberty of South Carolina led him to represent his home state in the Continental Congress. When the time came to have a navy, and a leader for said navy, the young Congress chose Essex Hopkins. A flag was needed to distinct the Commodore on the seas, and Gadsden had an idea. Colonel Gadsden presented to the Congress an elegant standard, such as if by used by a Commander-in-Chief of the American Navy, being a yellow field with a lively representation of a rattlesnake in the middle, and the attitude of going to strike, and those words underneath, don't tread on me. And it stuck. The snake with this motto became popular among revolutionaries, even used in the first Navy Jack. The snake was really the first American icon of the United States, a symbol that some revolutionaries saw just as important as Americans see the bald eagle today. The Gadsden flag fell to the relic of revolutionary times, until the 1970s with the rise of the libertarian movement. It's been centuries since the idea of the snake representing the US, but the flag took on a new meaning. Since the founders believed in the dangers of a large government, this flag was more or less a simple symbol to evoke back to this time in American history. A symbol of the underdog. 
and to many it became popular once again, over decades coming back into American politics, protests, and bumper stickers. The odd thing about the Gadsden flag is that the meaning can be used by any American. The threat of government interference feels like it's a threat both conservatives and liberals have voiced opinions over the last decade. So here's the interesting thing. Unlike some symbols which have had a complicated past, this is a flag rooted in the origins of the country. Who knows? Maybe the public idea of this flag may very well transform in the future, but this is simply an idea to think about. So while protests go on and the fate of the US remains uncertain, one fact will still remain. The Gadsden flag will always appear whenever a protest is near.